We're going to move on to our keynote speaker. Now, this is interesting. I'm going to introduce Matt, and I just met him this morning. So, uh, but I know a lot about him, and I just met Jamie Bees, who's with him today. I just met her this morning, too, but let me tell you about Matt. Uh, Darielle Hoden, one of the co-chairs, heard Matt speak at some sort of a library meeting about the orphanage in Majengo. And she was so impressed with him, she came and told us all about him. So I'm not going to go into, he's a businessman in Warren, probably one of the most creative people we know. I'm not going to go into his story because I think he'll probably tell most of it himself. Is that correct, Matt? Uh, I'll make something up in the next half hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is Matt McKissick, and he has Jamie with him. And welcome, and we're so glad to have you here with us today. Thank you very much. So, uh, I really appreciate the, uh, the layup here, Carl. So I got this uh, piece of paper in my hand. This, this is like comic gold sitting in front of me. I didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, John Bio here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I. We'll get to say the orphans in a moment because this is. Uh, sorry, John. I'm glad you're seated over there. So, see, the thing is, I too was a native of Youngsville, Pennsylvania, a graduate of Youngsville High School. And notwithstanding all the stuff that follows this, all that impressive stuff, you're saying, wow, this is great. Because I actually know, I now know when this happened. It had to be around July or August of 2001 when uh, I was in my office and I recall uh, when my mother learned that John was the, the new CEO of Warren. I'm not making this up. This, I, I couldn't have seen this coming, right? And. Uh, She's like, oh, John, I'm like, awesome, I need to change his diapers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, I, gave a, I gave a version of this talk a few months ago, and uh, Jamie had very uh, charitably written a, uh, a lengthy, detailed, flattering bio for me and asked me to approve it. And uh, I looked at it, and I'm just, you know, just, you know, just, just introduce me, and I'll come up and talk. It, just, it seemed awkward to me like that. So, and, and both my mom and Jamie pounced on me afterwards, and they're like, you didn't tell them who they were. There's no reason why they should think you're legitimate or take you seriously. You've got to tell them that you're the CEO of a, of a small startup firm. And all that. So anyway, so I need to, so I'm going to toy with you a little bit here also, but uh, uh, so I'm supposed to tell you that now. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the CEO of McKissick, small local startup firm. We employ about 80 people locally. Um, and uh, so, and my mother is very proud of me. <laughs> Your diapers, too. What's that? Anybody? Yeah, so, uh, uh, I don't know what that means, but I guess that means you're supposed to feel better about giving me money and trusting that it will go to orphans. Uh, once again, but correctly, but at some level, I guess, uh, uh, it doesn't matter uh, if you don't have the good sense to leave a small town like Youngsville, it doesn't matter what you accomplish, there will always be people in the room who change your diapers and will never allow you to take yourself seriously. Uh, and John, I'm, I'm confident she's proud of you, too. But, uh, but more so. Uh, but, but, but thank you very much. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, the, the, the abuse ends there, John, I think. Uh, actually, I do appreciate you setting the bar very, very low with your <coughs> Apple. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I trust you. I mean, if, 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 just knock it off. <laughs> that, 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 so um, let's see. Uh, if you look at the uh, uh, materials, uh, Lynn Connell and I were scheduled to speak together at this. Uh, Darielle asked me about. I guess it was November. Uh, if, if I would uh, be so kind as to, uh, to show up for this today, and uh, we gave with Lynn and said, uh, you know, Lynn, why don't you uh, figure this out if we can? Uh, but. Um, Lynn actually has had to take off to Tanzania because of an emergency opportunity that we have over there. And that's, that's, that's a, a, a very precise choice of words, an emergency opportunity. And uh, I'll tell you some more about that a little bit later on. But uh, uh, big, exciting stuff going on over in Tanzania right now as we attempt to expand and, uh, and, and broaden our reach. But uh, uh, when Lynn learned of this and was trying to figure out how she could go over there on short notice, she said, oh, I can't do it. We have to give this talk in, uh, in Warren, October. This is just a couple weeks ago. I'm like, you know, I'll talk for 30 minutes, and then you go say 55 kids, and you know, we're a team, and we'll somehow figure out a share of credit of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I'll talk for the next 30 minutes, and then we'll uh, spend the next month in a third world country saving 50 kids, and somehow I'll end up getting more credit than I deserve for that in the end. 
Um, but to that point, uh, 30 minutes to tell this story is not adequate, but it's all you're probably going to have patience for. So I, I will do my best. Uh, but apologies to more people than I can even name. Uh, Jamie, uh, Ian, uh, Ian Ashbaugh, Becky Yeager, uh, Rose and Terry, Jeff, Emily, Yvonne, my mom, my dad, and countless others. Uh, I have to compromise to tell a meaningful version of the 30-minute story. And it's always kind of awkward because I have a strong sense that I wound up get, getting more credit than I actually deserve uh, at the end of that process. But um, let's see. Uh, I guess what I'd like to do, um, it, it, it is quite a challenge for me. Brevity is not a uh, historical strength of mine. Okay. This is working for Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, but I guess if I could share with you how I became inspired to get involved in this project at a visceral level, that's something I maybe can get across to people somewhat effectively. And I, I, I guess my goal here is to find uh, one or two or three people in this room for whom this, this story resonates, who are the sort of people who decide that it would be a privilege to get involved and participate in a project like this, uh, to make it a part of them, and to make themselves a part of it. And so I'm trying to reach out and find a few of those individuals, because we have a lot of work to do, and we've set some very daunting goals for ourselves. Uh, what we're trying to accomplish here. So I guess I'll start by telling you about Lynn Connell. I am sorry you didn't get a chance to, to, to see her here and meet, uh, because this really is, uh, she, she is the hero of this story. Okay, Lynn has inspired me. She's one of my heroes. And I did not know Lynn two years ago today. So I guess I'll just start by telling you how I came to meet Lynn uh, a couple of years ago. Jerry, all apologies. Uh, you've already uh, seen the first 20 minutes of this talk about a year ago, okay? But, uh, but uh, there, there, there's some other really important stuff to add to that. So, um, it, it was uh, January of last year, and I was in the process of uh, uh, making arrangements to, to, to rent her family's uh, lakefront cottage up in uh, Canada, north of Toronto. I never met her before. And uh, we were negotiating the terms of it, and I just negotiated her down about $500. I mean, a savvy businessman. Did I mention I was a CEO? <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, towards the end of it, um, she said, this, this is a Thursday. And she said, you know, I, I need to get the, uh, the contract signed right away with the deposit in because I'm leaving the country on, like, Thursday of next week to head to Africa for, for a couple months. So here I am. I, mind you, I was just minding my own business, not thinking about African orphans or saving the world or anything remotely like that. And uh, so, oh, she's heading to Africa. So, you know, just, you know, uh, uh, socially obligatory small talk, I guess. I said, uh, oh, what are you going to do in Africa? I think she's saying she's going on a safari or vacation. Oh, I'm starting up an orphanage over there. Mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. Now I can't just... Oh, good luck with that. So, so you know, I, I made uh, polite small talk and asked her some questions about the orphanage and uh, uh, feigned some level of interest. And it was interesting. But, you know, it it kind of catch my attention. Jeez, who does that? You know, just goes to Africa, start with an orphanage. But it really was like a two-minute discussion. No big deal. So uh, she uh, she then emailed me over uh, the contract that I was to sign. And if uh, our technology is working correctly, she just happened to uh, attach to that photograph. <laughs> And I think it's not an exaggeration. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, this one's worth several million. And I think it is not an exaggeration for me to tell you that this her, her attaching this photo changed my life. I'm like, huh, there's 52 kids. I, I kind of made eye contact there. And uh, so, uh, but you know, I was busy that day. I signed the contract. I wrote a check for the deposit for the, uh, for the cottage. You know, and just out of whim. On a whim, as I'm putting my checkbook away, I pull it back out and wrote a check for $500. The amount I just, you know, in a very savvy, shrewd way, negotiated her down on for the rental. And I wrote a memo for the order. And I just stuck it in, and I really thought that would be the end of it. Okay? It's an interesting uh, sort of situation. I thought that would be the end of it. And uh, anyway, uh, so she, uh, I sent the stuff over FedEx, and um, the next day she called me back and thanked me profusely for the exceedingly generous uh, donation. And so I really didn't think much of it. It was just one of those moments of weakness and you, you're talking to an interesting person, you take a leap of faith, yeah, that's just too interesting a story. And she sent the photograph there. So uh, I, I asked her a lot more questions. This, this was not on my agenda that day or even in life to have this discussion or to get caught up in it. Like I said, I was minding my own darn business with no plan to do anything like this. Uh, so, here's what I learned. 